Good afternoon and welcome to Bath High School. It is sectional semifinal baseball day after a rainout day on Wednesday. It's the Elida Bulldogs from Western Buckeye League. They are 9 and 11, 4 and 5 in conference play against the home team, the Bath Wildcats. They are 13 and 12. They were 4 and 5 in the Western Buckeye League. My name is Mark Shine. My pleasure to play by play. Alongside Chad Spencer, Chad, these teams played a month ago. Different pitchers, whole different bas baseball game today. Yeah, you know, it always changes at tournament time, but it would be interesting to see how each of these teams respond against arms that they haven't seen before. Elida batting order will go this way as they are the visiting team. Of course, Gabe Adcock will lead off. He is the center fielder. Seth Sharp will be the catcher and bat second. Ryan Magoo is the pitcher. He hits third. Braden Simmons will be in right field. He will be the number four hitter. Mark Troyer, the designated hitter. He hits for Travis Adkins, the first baseman. Zach Seaver is at shortstop. Trey Hershey is at second base. Brody Altenbach at third. And Darren Jones in left field. On the mound for Bath today, this would be Clay Bodecker today. Clay is two and four on the season, but it's been kind of a hard luck pitcher. He's only got an ERA of 1.93, giving up only nine earned runs on the season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he really hasn't thrown that bad, Mark. Um, certainly well enough to keep his team in a lot of games, but you just can't give teams extra outs per inning, and that's unfortunately he's been a victim of that with, uh, with the defense. He has an ERA of 1.93 in those 32 and, and two-thirds innings. He's given up 37 hits, 11 walks, but he struck out 40 batters in his 32 and two-thirds innings. Around the infield, Kane Sullivan will be the catcher. Joel Razor plays at third. Jaden Miller is the shortstop. Tyson McGee will play at second base, and Quentin Collins will be at first. Left, center, and right, Zach Welsh, Skyler Lehman, and Jackson Kohlreiser for the Wildcats today. Our umpires behind the plate, Tim Sherman, and on the bases, Brian Liebarger. The winner goes to Clear Fork tomorrow. Now, there should have been a day off yeah, in there yeah. with the, the rain obviously messed that up. But here's Gabe Adcock to step in, a 302 hitter on the season. Bo, Bo Decker's first pitch is a swinging strike. You know, with a short turnaround like that, obviously whoever wins this game is hoping that it's a fairly efficient game and that you don't have to go real deep into your your pitching headed into tomorrow. Bo Decker's breaking ball stays high that time. It's one and one is the count. Seth Sharp follows, followed by Ryan McGew. That fastball is high. Looking down through Elida's lineup, Mark, I think we'll get an idea what kind of offensive effectiveness we might get just with these first three or four hitters. Ball's hit up in the air. Tracking it down will be the right fielder, or left fielder, Zach Welch, and there's one out in the inning. I hate to say this, but I think I coached Zach's dad down at Wapakoneta <laughs> back in the 1990s. <laughs> Here at the Wildcat Park, it is 300 down the left field line. It uh, bends into 358 in center field. It ends up at 309 down the right field line. It is a wonderful day for baseball. About 78 degrees and virtually no wind. That pitch is way high. We've got a lot different atmosphere than we did yesterday, Mark. I drove by here yesterday morning, and uh, the second base area, the shortstop, was underwater, mm -hmm. and uh, they were trying to get it ready, and then more rain came yeah. in the afternoon. just wasn't going to happen. One of those that count. Yeah, I don't think that would have been very successful. Looks good today, though. Foul ball back away. Sharp hits 327 on the season. He has scored 18 runs and has driven in a seven as the senior. You know, he leads their team in slugging percentage. Um, also in batting average, uh, he's kind of a kind of a gap hitter. He's got four or five doubles this year, so he's had a nice senior season. Pitches across the top part of the strike zone to make it one and two. Bodecker's shown that he wants to go to that curveball early, but so far they've been at the top of the zone. That one is way high to level the count at 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, breaking balls high, and those uh, end up in the outfield. Yeah, they end up staying high. 2-2 <laughs> two is the count. Foul ball. Sharp has stolen seven bases this season. The... Uh, Bulldogs have 66 sold in bases in their 20 games. Looks like they just got a base runner here yes, on a swing did. and a miss. 
Could okay. have been a strikeout, but. Explain that one, buddy. Yeah. Ball got away from the catcher, and so we're going to end up with a runner on first base. Pass ball, wild pitch. No, I think it's wild pitches pitch, down yeah. in the down in the dirt. Tough break for Bo Decker and the and the Wildcats. Obviously, a risk to go here. You mentioned Elida stealing 66 bases this year for a team that has not had as much out offensive output as you would, as I'm certainly they hope would be. It's amazing they run a lot. Ball's fouled down the right field line. It's a team that has scored just 79 runs yeah. in their 20 games, and so a chance to get runners on base and maybe move them around. Yeah, you really think about, like, where's all those steal stolen bases gone because they're obviously not scoring. Team batting average on the season this year for the Bulldogs is just a 226. I did a little math before the game, and that's about 3.95 runs per game. So a little bit lower probably than your average high school team. Back to Collins as the pitch goal or the toss goal comes from Bo Decker. That's pretty good for a social studies guy. Not bad. No, I, 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 I got to get a calculator. I'm a social well, studies guy too. You know, I didn't say I didn't use a calculator. <laughs> Foul ball back. <laughs> I do know how to turn one of those on. 0-2 oh, is the count. The winner will go to Clear Fork tomorrow night. Clear Fork was the number two seed when the draw came out. That's a, that's a tall task. Good His, block by Sullivan. Historically good program. Have had a really nice run the last five or six years at Clear Fork. And a long road trip. It is. That is a fact. On a Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. But you get out of school early, so there's some upside. The ball's hit up in the air to left field it's when they get to it. Hole. It's going to find a hole. That's exactly right. Good base running by Sharp as he realized it was going to fall. It's the old definition of hitting them where they ain't. Just dropped it in over the shortstop's head. I thought the outfielders got a good break on it. It just was yep. placed such that it wasn't catchable. That will bring... Simmons to the plate. Braden Simmons hits 214. He's got seven RBIs, does the junior right fielder. Swings you know, with that, pitch. with that low run output, here we are this deep in the in the season, and there's not one Elida player that has 10 RBIs yet. So it's kind of interesting that it's been spread through their lineup. Pick up by Sullivan. His second pitch of to Simmons is a ball with levels of count of one and one. Let's do that pitch and misses it. Low fastball. One and two is the count. Clay's able to bury a couple pitches here. He's, he's coming down in the zone, which is a nice adjustment that you want to see out of your pitcher early. And got him looking. Right there. Second strike out of the inning. That one is the looking variety. And that will bring to the plate Mark Troyer, the designated hitter. 229 on the season with three RBIs. He hits for Travis Adkins, who was the first baseman. It looked like Simmons was expecting a waste pitch there because he never even triggered on that pitch. Breaking ball for a strike. First pitch strikes to four of the first five hitters from Bo Decker. It's what you want, isn't it, sir? And that pitch is high. One and one. I've seen Tim Sherman work a lot of games behind the plate. He's he's probably one of the more consistent uh, strike zones that I've seen in the high school game for a while. That pitch is a strike at the top of the zone. One and two is the count. And that's really what you want as a pitcher, it right? Is, yeah. Just be consistent. Absolutely. Let me know what you're going to call and what you aren't. And, and for those of you that don't understand, that was a compliment to an umpire. <laughs> Breaking ball, and that will be a strikeout. Down goes Mark Troyer. And Sullivan gets out of the inning after putting two on. We'll go to the bottom of the first. It's one to nothing. It's a nothing, nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WSN. Bath Wildcats coming to bat in the bottom of the first inning. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. To the mound for the uh, Elida Bulldogs will be Ryan Magoo. Five and two on the season out of their... Uh, nine wins this year. He has five of them. He's been on the mound for 48 innings. 
29 hits, 19 walks, 64 strikeouts, and a 1.31 ERA. He is their guy this year. Big, strong guy who can bring it. The Wildcats will go with this way. Skyder Lehman will hit first. Tyson McGee, Joel Racer will follow him. In the four spot is Quentin Collins, Zach Welch, Jaden Miller, Kane Sullivan, Clay Bodecker, and Jackson Kohlreiser to finish out the Wildcat batting order. Bath hits 269 on the season. They've scored 109 runs in their 25 uh, games that they have played. I was at an event probably three weeks ago, and, and uh, Ryan was there and uh, had a chance to, to kind of stand next to him in a room. And you're right, he's a, he's a good-sized kid. He's well put together. His catcher today, if we look around uh, the infield, and uh, if for the uh, Elida Bulldogs, Seth Sharp will be behind the plate. Brody Altenbach will play third. Zach Seaver is the shortstop. Trey Hershey's at second. Travis Adkins plays first base, and then left center right. Darian Jones, Gabe Adcock, and Braden Simmons. Here's the throw down, and we will move on to the bottom of the first inning. Elida put a couple on the top of the inning, but Bodecker got out of it. I think it's important for Elida that Ryan starts well. Um, I wouldn't expect this to be a super, super high scoring game today. So you get through the first two or three innings, get your pitcher settled in and see where it goes. Skyler Lehman hits 277 on the season, does the senior center fielder. He has scored 14 runs this year. He also has a home run. Fastball strike as he swings through that pitch and fouled it back. Wildcats have hit nine home runs on the season. I know. I, I saw that the other day. I'm like, man, that's, a, that's an unusual amount for a high school team. Pitch is low. That goes to one and one. Scotter's also stolen eight bases. The Wildcats have stolen 48 bases on the season. A little less, little little less speed than, and a little yeah. more power. You know, I remember when they changed to bat several years ago. You might go through a whole season and only see one or two home runs. One and two is the count as that pitch caught the outside corner at the knees. Pitch bounces off the plate, right off back the, plate. the screen. Yep, two and two. We got a pattern here, strikes and one <laughs> to the screen. Tyson McGee is on deck. Ball's grounded to the third. Pick up by Altenbach. Throws it across the diamond. It's a little bit wide. An E5 there. It will be an E5. He had plenty of time, Mark. Just didn't execute the throw. Got a nice high hop. And that will bring in Tyson McGee, the second baseman. Tyson hits 220 on the season. Let's see how coach... Coach plays this here. Try to get this guy up to second. And we're having a little discussion here with uh, Coach Gomez and umpire Brian Leibarger. Both of them seem satisfied, whatever yeah. that's all about. Lehman does have eight stolen bases at first base. Who looks? Foul ball. No indication of running on that one. He didn't have an exceptionally large lead. See if he strength lengthens it out here a bit. Ryan McGew, big tall guy at, uh, on the mound, a little bit to slower to first base, perhaps, mm -hmm. into the plate. Here's a throwback. That was close. Had quick feet on that one, didn't yes, he? Yes, sir. right on top yeah, of the action today. We bro. are. They got the Wildcat cheering section right below us. They were on top of their dugout. Foul ball again. 0 oh, and 2 is the count. So no indication of button him down. No. He's going to swing no. away. I'm going to swing and run here. Joel Razor's on deck. I could see a fastball coming here just to make sure that he's not running. If he is, you get a pitch to throw one. 1 and 2. Yeah, I think Coach Gomez 
and Coach Leatherman early would try to get a guy up and get him over to get him in. There he goes. Pitch is high. Got him called strike three, and the throw was off a line a bit. Stolen base. For Lehman, but that was a strikeout. Yeah. For the first out. Accomplishes the same thing as a sacrifice, but I'm sure Tyson McGee's not pleased with it. Joe Razor, the left-handed hitting third baseman, will hit next. 358 on the season. He scored 24 runs, hit two home runs this season, yeah. also has nine RBIs. Jo Joel's had a good year, good senior year. And one thing about Bath, their seniors have, have performed. Strike, the top part of the zone. The Wildcats went through a spell where they defeated three straight state-ranked teams. At Wapak, and they got uh, Lincoln View, and uh, I got to think who the third one was, Minster. Minster. Pitches down, good stop behind the plate by Sharp. Well, just the whole topic of playing in the WBL was a chaotic ride this year for almost every team. It, it seemed like on each, even give it, every given day, anyone could beat anyone. McGue looks again. Balls swung tardy on and hit over the left field he fence. He fought that one off, didn't he? He did for a fact. One and two is the count. You talked about the Western Buckeye League. Wapak defeats Defiance one to nothing mm -hmm. to win to make a tie for the league championship. They both ended up eight and one. Heck of a game that night. Tyler Eccles pitched, or Taylor Eccles pitched. Got him looking with a called strike three. Second out of the inning. If I remember right, he threw a two hitter that night, struck out about 14 kids, and heck of a game. Quentin Collins will be intentionally walked. Quentin was hitting 481 on the season with nine RBI, and that will put him on at first base and also bring up Zach Welch to the plate, the sophomore left fielder. 275 with seven RBIs for Zach on the season. A little gamesmanship early, here early in the yes, game, Coach. Is. We're not going to give him a chance to beat mm -hmm. us. Quentin Collins is 481 average and five of their nine home runs. Mm -hmm. Pitches in the dirt. And that's going to move both runners up. So now Collins goes to second. Lehman goes to third on the wild pitch. Yeah, that's a that's a big ball because now a base hit, your potential being down two instead of one. Jaden Miller's on deck with his 308 average. Fastball high. 2 and 0. Oh. Foul ball. 2 and 1. Bats getting her cuts in. They're swinging early with the pitches in the zone. So I look around the center fielder, Adcock plays into the more of the right mm -hmm. the field area, thinking of a late swing perhaps. Magoo looks for a long time. Here's the pitch. That was grounded up the middle. Play by the shortstop. Seaver, can he get him? Safe at first base. Tried to dig it out and could not. Well, that was a heck of a play just getting to the ball. It was. He really did a good job of getting back up on his feet and really didn't make that bad of a throw. Infield hit for Zach Welch. Drives in one as he hustles down the line and scores Skyler Lehman from third. There's that wild pitch making a difference. Yes, sir. That's huge, isn't it? And that will bring Jaden Miller to the plate. The sophomore shortstop, 308 on the season. He has 16 RBIs on the season for the Wildcats. Bath with a 1-0 lead here in the bottom of the first. Collins the, on third. Off the bat, I thought that ball might get through, but Seaver did, did a nice job of getting to it and getting up to make a throw. It's a strike. Wouldn't be surprised to see Coach Gomez do some kind of first and third play here, put some pressure on the defense and make them react to your base running. Welch has five stolen bases on the season. Popped up. 
Looks like we've got room here. We do, and the catcher makes a play on it. it. Does Seth Sharp? He does. So foul ball out. We'll be out number three for the Wildcats, but they take a 1-0 lead as we head to the top of the second. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. Second inning, top of the second inning for the Elida Bulldogs. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Wildcats scored in the bottom of the first. It was an unearned run, but still puts them up one to nothing. And Elida will come calling with Zach Seaver, the shortstop, uh, Trey Hershey, the second baseman, and Brody Alton, Altenbach, the third baseman, to face Clay Bodecker. Three strikeouts for Clay in the opening mm -hmm. inning. Giving him a total of 43 on the season in 33 and two-thirds innings. Last two or three hitters, it looked like he really was starting to get settled in. So we'll see how that long inning, long half inning affects him as he gets back to being loose again. Zach Seaver hits 244 on the season. He scored 11 runs. Popped up. Third baseman, Razor, circles under it and makes the play. First out of the inning. And Trey Hershey will hit. Second baseman. Chad, I'm looking out to the softball diamond. Of course, they were rained out yesterday, mm -hmm. too. Parkway was playing Van Buren. And... First pitch is a ball. After three innings, or in the third inning, Van Buren was up 8-2, and the rain came. Oh, my. Parkway just won 9-8. Oh, my. Yeah. This sounds kind of like the Cleveland Indians and Phillies from a few years ago. You just never know, do you? you no, know, you don't. That's why you play on yep. play till the end. That ball's lined in the right left field, right but it's an Adam ball as he drills it right to Zach Welch, and Welch makes the play. I don't know if Zach took two steps on that, did he, Mark? Had it played perfectly. Yeah. Yes, he Looking did. Looking right into the sun. It is a, a sun field here in the, the left side of the infield at the bath, and that will bring Brody Alton back to play, 250 hit hitter. Sophomore third baseman. It's a strike, first pitch strike. Bodecker trying to get through an easier inning after a struggle yeah. for inning number one. Very pitch efficient this inning. Fastball, and that one is a bit low. But he has come down in the zone a lot more than he was yeah, early he in the game. Yeah, and it, it, once he got past the first couple of hitters. And... Ground ball, it's hit to the second baseman, pick up by McGee, and he lobs it over. Collins goes up and gets it, and we get it out. It's a one, two, three inning, and we'll go to the bottom of the second. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Bath as we go to the bottom of the second inning. The Wildcats are up on top 1-0 on the Elida Bulldogs. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The Wildcats will go with Kane Sullivan, Clay Bodecker, and Jackson Kohlreiser here in the bottom of the second inning. Kane Sullivan hits 208 on the season, but has scored 10 runs. And Ryan McGoo back on the mound, and he swings through the first pitch to Sullivan. Notice that Darian Jones shades a little bit in left field towards center. Uh, compared to where Welsh has been playing for the Wildcats. Breaking ball misses. And that's again looking at uh, the center fielder does the same. Adcock mm -hmm. shaded towards right a bit. That's expecting a tardy swing then. Yes, sir. Especially with the bottom of the order here, seven, eight, and nine. Simmons is completely out of my vision with the uh, way the press box is set up here. So any yeah. ball hit out there, okay. we're relying on you, my friend. Well, I'm going to have to lean out of the, uh, our window here and hope I don't <laughs> fall out. It's uh, two and one is the count on Sullivan. Popped up and it's hit down the right field line. That'll go out of play and we'll make the count two and two. So I got to ask you, I had uh, several conversations with my broadcast partners this mm -hmm. year. Is it RBI or RBIs? No, that's a great uh, question. It's, it's, uh, 
Breaking That's ball, got him question. looking. Did you give, him, give well, Did you give them a definitive answer? I, I gave them my answer, which is <laughs> RBIs. It is an acronym with an S on the end. Right, it's, right. Rather than the runs batted in, which I get. I, right. I see where we're coming from. Okay, here comes Clay Bodecker stepping in. Clay struggled to plate this year and deep in the batter's box and takes a first pitch strike. Well, you know what they say, it doesn't matter what it is if you don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> That's, there you go. Magoo back to the plate, breaking balls hit, and that's in a line into right field. And Bo Decker's gonna be on with a single. Clay did a really nice job of staying back on that pitch and just staying level with it through the zone. Soft line drive into right field. Did not look like a young man who struggled to play no, this year. That was, he put a, a nice good swing, swing on that one. Here's really the number nice nine swing. hitter, Jackson Kohlreiser, a 275 for the senior. And he will step in with an out here. And a runner on base. Breaking ball, strike, good, good pitch. Magoo pitched him backwards there to start with. Mm -hmm. Curve ball first. But you got a 275 guy in the nine hole, so obviously he's been getting on base for the Wildcats. Senior right fielder. And that snapped off. Had him leaning back for strike two. Yep. Continues to pitch him backwards. Skyder Lehman will hit next. I wouldn't be shocked if he got a third one, would you? No. He's, he's looked a little bit uh, yep. frozen on that one right there and missed on the first one. Try to locate something out of the zone a little bit and see if he'll chase or take. Decker creeping out a little bit more than he was. He got the fastball yeah. low and away and got a swinging strike. His fourth strikeout here and just two out, two, two outs into the second inning. Scott Lehman comes back. Not sure that's a real hittable pitch, but obviously with two strikes, he felt like he had to protect. It's a good pitch for the pitch. It's a great pitch. Make, make yeah. him chase something if it's a keeps it down. Yep. Bodecker really much getting a bigger good lead. lead. Yeah. Much bigger lead here. Really surprised Magoo hasn't thrown over. First pitch strike. Do you run your pitcher? I'm sorry? Are you going to run? run you, gotta, um, yeah. you know, this early in the game, I don't know. With two outs, I yeah. don't think you do. Got one of those oven mitts protecting your throw. Right. Hand. Foul ball. I guess you have to weigh, is he more important to you at second base or is he more important to you on the mound? And in a game like today, obviously, yeah. You need his legs under him when he's pitching. 0-2. Oh and, and got him with a high pitch. Struck out the Struck out the side. Yeah, he struck out the side. I had to look back to make sure mm -hmm. that was correct. In fact, he's got five strikeouts now through two innings. But the Wildcats will take a 1-0 lead to the top of the third. You're watching High School Baseball on WSN. To the bottom of the second we go at Bath. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years. The office is in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. And our scoreboard says Wildcats on top 1-0 with an unearned run in the top of the or the bottom of the first innings. And Elida will go with their number nine hitter, that's Darian Jones, followed by back at the top of the order, Gabe Adcock and Seth Sharp. Ken Sullivan. Behind the plate and back to the mound will go Clay Bodecker for his third inning of work. Clay has to be very happy with the second inning. Very few pitchers thrown, got his three outs quick. Two pop-ups, uh, one to right field, one to left field, mm -hmm. one to the third baseman and got a ground ball out. And he gets the number nine hitter, the left-handed hitting, Darian Jones. The most he went to any hitter was three pitches last inning. Fastball strike. Darian's a freshman, hits 256 on the season. He scored six runs and has eight RBIs from the bottom of the order. Pitches inside as he ducks away from that one. Oh, 
this badly with that pitch. Two and one. Well, even as a freshman, you know, you're going to try to find a spot for him if you've got it with a left-handed hitter with good speed. Makes it three and one on that pitch. Daring a pitch away from becoming the runner. Full count, three think, and two. I think Darian might have thought that was a little, little outside the zip code there. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to duck under a little he bit. He did. He's got a really low. The umpire and came back and got him with a swinging strike three. Like Four strikeout. Like Darian had a really heavy bat on that swing, Mark, if you notice. <laughs> yes. And back to the top of the order we go. Gabe Adcock, who fly down to the left fielder. A little game. bit overmatched with the velocity of that, that swing. Bo Decker back to the plate. Adcock likes to stand super, super deep in the box. He'll, he'll be in Tim Sherman's <laughs> chest protector here in about two pitches. Ground ball to the third. Nope, the shortstop's going to make a play on it. Miller, and that ball's going to be a single in the mm -hmm. hole. Adcock adds to his 302 average on the season. Well struck ball. Just out of the reach of third base. Now, this is one we might look to run. Adcock yeah. has 21 of the 66 stolen bases this year for the United Bulldogs. Right. And Seth Sharp steps in with his 327 average. I'm sure in Gabe's mind, he's already running. But saw Bo Decker throw over right away, so he's aware too. Breaking ball. That was a bit high. I don't see him waiting real long either, Mark. I think it'll, it'll happen early if he's gonna do it. Snap throw, dug out by Collins at first base. Pitch was called a strike, so it's 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. There he goes. Swung through the pitch, here's the throw, and... Got him. They did get him. Sullivan, they put the throw right on the money. Snap tag by McGee, and they got him. It's a great throw, even on a curveball. Sullivan put it right on the bag. A little bit of a different uh, hold, though, from yeah, uh, Bo Decker. He looked it over was. his right shoulder instead of his left. Mm -hmm. That pitch is high, and the count will go to two and two. Sharp pitch 327. It's hard to evaluate what that does for your defense and for your pitcher to erase their top, top base stealing threat in a close game like this. Breaking ball high. We're full count with two outs. And if you think ahead down the line, you know, that the top of the lineup, if things go like it's going, might only get one more bat this game. That ball's hit up in the air towards Welch. And he makes his third put out of the game. And we will go to the bottom of the third with the Wildcats still on top one to nothing. You're watching high school baseball on WSN. We head to the bottom of the third. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at apple.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and on Apple. To the bottom of the third we go. The Wildcats will go with McGee, Razor, and Collins here with a 1-0 lead on our web insurance scoreboard. Tyson McGee struck out in the opening inning. One of the five strikeouts that Ryan Magoo has put on the board today. And Ryan's punched out five of the six outs that they've gotten. But unfortunately for him, an unearned run has put him behind one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the third. Here is McGee. Tyson's going to play baseball at Terra State next year in Fremont. Hmm. Magoo. Something you don't see very much here, Mark, is there's a little bit of a breeze, but it's blown in from center today, which is not I, typical yeah, for yeah, this that's field. Correct. That's really unusual here. Gentle. <laughs> not not going to make much of an impact on the game. Which is outside, it's 2-0. Oh. I could throw a trivia question at you that almost no one in our listening audience will get. Uh-oh, yeah. that's a lot of pressure. Here we go. 
So I wouldn't feel bad about this, and there's a strike. It's two and one. The athletic director, the acting athletic director at Terra State this year has been... No clue. Mr. Jerry Snodgrass. Has it really? Yeah. No kidding. That ball's hit up in the air. Here comes the center fielder, Adcock, and nope, it's going to be made by the left fielder, Jones. He gets the fly ball out. I did not know that. It was one of those things where you say, yeah, I'll help you out as soon as you mm -hmm. can get a full-timer, and guess what? Here we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you end up doing it for a large part of the season. There's Joel Razor stepped in. Joel took a called third strike. I'd say he's fairly qualified. I think he is. <laughs> One of the good guys in high school sports. That ball's hit foul as he got ahead of that one. Yeah, Jerry's got quite the resume, oh, doesn't he? The negative is that took him out of some of our broadcasts this oh, winter yeah, that we would have sure. liked to use him Absolutely. with. And wish him the best. But he's back to, I think he's out of that particular role as we got to spring sports anyway. One of one's the count. You said that school's in Fremont, right? It is. Yeah, so yeah. close to home for Jerry. It started out as, how would you like to be an academic counselor and help us out some? And it turned into something a little bit more than that. You just got to be careful what you say yes, yes to. Yes, correct. The ball's hit up in the air. Adcock will trace this one down and probably could have stayed right in the same spot yeah. and made the catch. But either way, he gets that fly ball out. Two fly ball outs in the inning. Got a few extra steps in on his watch. Here's Quentin Collins. Left-handed hitting first baseman. Quentin was walked intentionally. Well, we'll get to see Quentin swing the bat here. Ball's fouled down the right the left field line and it's gonna go into the crowd over there. Quentin hits 481 on the season and has half or has five of the home runs. Quentin's gonna play baseball at Madonna. Yeah. Have a have a year, Quentin. One and one's account means we'll see him out at UNOH. Sure. That'd be great for his family, getting to see him when he Foul comes ball. into town. One and two. McGue trying to get through his first one, two, three innings. But he'll have to get past the big hitting first baseman for the Wildcats. Foul ball. Travis Adkins playing back about as far as he can at first base. With we'll change up that time. Yeah, without being in right field. Count will stay at one and two. Kind of fought that one off of the change up. Mm -hmm. Magoo. With a one and two count. The ball's hit foul. Almost got him in the foot coming out of the box. Sixth pitch of this at bat coming up. It's one and two is the count. This is one of the longer at bats we've seen today. Did he hold he up? He did not go. Oh, and they I got swore him. Or he didn't yeah, go. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd agree. I think you and I had a pretty good angle <laughs> yeah. with that, too. Well, either way, that is McGew's sixth strikeout and will be a one, two, three inning. So we'll go to the top of the fourth. It's bath one. The light of nothing. You're watching High School Baseball, WSN. Back at Bath, to the top of the fourth we go. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's, famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's, famous recipe chicken, where home style happens here. Mark Shine, Chad Spencer. Chad, I've said this a couple times this year. The way you can tell I did not write that ad for Lee's, they didn't mention the iced tea. Oh, my. Because it is the best around. I was doing pretty well not listening to your <laughs> ad until you added the tea. Here's Ryan McGee to step in in the fourth. Odecker, that pitch is lined right by the third base coach and almost got get him. Coach Leatherman a glove. Yeah. You ever get hit down there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More than once. A couple of them stand out. 
Ball's hit hard up the middle. That's a nice hit for McGue. Put a good swing on that one. And he gets the second hit of the game for the Elida Bulldogs. And opening up with a single, that will bring Braden Simmons to the plate. Braden look at a third strike back in the opening inning. Make the pitcher die back there. You know, you asked earlier about the pitcher running. I don't think now you really have a choice if you're down in the fourth and you got to find a way to get a kid to second if you can. Oh, and one's the count on that <coughs> pitch right there. I see Magoo's got four stolen bases on the year, so not, a, not an exorbitant threat to run out of their 66, but has run occasionally. Not a real big lead, though. Breaking ball, that's a strike. Does that look to you like a, a, a lead for a steal? It does not, does it? <laughs> Troyers, look at two strikes here. Not Troyers, excuse me, Simmons. Got to, I will help myself in the mm -hmm. batting order a little bit. Mm -hmm. Simmons. Right. He looked at a call strike three, one of the four strikeouts so far in the game for Clay Bodecker. That one's foul, got just a piece of that one. This is a spot in the game where you might throw over two or three times to, just, 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 to, just to wear him out a little and bit. And make that pitcher dive mm -hmm. back in and run him down a little bit. Yep. Getting up and down off the dirt. Breaking ball is hit to the third base. The Razor's going to come in and make a play. Better and eat it. the throw back to second is going to be safe. It's a heads up play. Yep. Once he bobbled it just to see if he had to play at second base. Did they call that an error on the third baseman? I, I can't see the scoreboard. Did I they call it an error? They didn't put one up. But likewise, I don't see a spot on the scoreboard to record yeah. that one way. I think it was an error on the third Def baseman. Definitely was bobbled. Yeah. Either way, runners on first and second with Mark Troyer stepping in to to bat, where it's 229 with three RBIs on the season. He struck out back in inning number one to end inning number one. Well, they had two runners on in the opening inning, mm -hmm. couldn't score. Now they've got the first two runners on here in the fourth. And trying to bunt. Well, that's, that's a good pitch, right? Get that fastball is, up yeah, high. It's it tough to high. get a bat on top of it and get it down into the grass. You know, you're, you're pitching against a team that's had a hard time scoring runs, so... Not shocked that they try to bunt him up and maybe even bunt him in. I've, I saw a light of play earlier this year, and I know Coach Leatherman likes a short game, but he probably feels like he needs to do that to manufacture some runs. McGue on second base has scored six runs this year. That curveball's high. One and one. like Bath's defense is playing the bunt straight up. That pitch is also high, two and one. <coughs> so far, no indication yeah. of going back to it after that first pitch. Collins and Razor are both in a bit at the corners. And a good eye. He looked at ball yeah, three. He, he triggered a little bit. Yep, thought about it. Held up. Right, it's a pitch here. Do you turn him loose? Three, one. Try to get the walk. Didn't turn yep. him loose, did he? Took all the way. Makes it a mm -hmm. full count. Elida trying to load the bases or get one in here with a full count. And nobody out here in inning number four. And pitches high. Walked him. So the bases are loaded with nobody out. Here comes Coach Gomez to the mound. We're looking at some short game here, Coach Shine. While the Wildcats have a conference on the mound, we're going to take a break. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. Meeting on the mound is over. You can check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, and social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. So you, you think, uh, having talked with, with Coach Letterman, seen Coach Letterman, this is a guy who, who might put a squeeze play on here in this situation. Yeah, this is a situation I always look for as a coach because especially after a meeting on the mound, 
you've got a kid that's having a hard time throwing strikes, so you're thinking he's probably going to come with the first pitch strike. Be a great pitch if you're going to bunt to go ahead and try it. Trey Hershey steps in. There's the bunt that's fouled. That was kind of a safety squeeze, though, yep, wasn't it? Yeah, he didn't commit. It's the idea, though, that I was talking about, that anything to put some pressure on the defense. And he lied a team that scores less than four runs per game, but they've got the bases loaded here in the fourth and nobody out with Hershey up. He flied out the first time. There's a bunt. And they're going to make the play at first. They're going to get the sacrifice. Yeah, I think if he'd have come up with a clean out of his glove, he might have had a play at the plate. McGew scores from third. That will go from catcher to the second baseman for the first out, and both runners moved up. And Well, you were right on that one. And don't be surprised to see it again. you got Troy Hershey who's coming in at a 102 average. I saw him bunt back to back two weeks ago. Ball's hit up in the air and will go out of play. So the RBI for Seaver. I think I said Troy, it's Trey. He popped a, flew out to the left fielder his first time up. That might get a run in in this situation. Mm -hmm. He does it again. And missed him badly on that one. Kind of removes the bunt possibility of down 0-2, I would think. I really thought that Bath would play their middle a little closer. And he looked to call strike three. Thought about it, couldn't pull the trigger. The fifth strikeout from Bo Decker will make two outs in the inning. Okay, if Bo Decker can get through this and only give up one, job well done. Here's Alton Bach. He grounded out to the second baseman to end inning number two. And he's going to hit that one. He's going to get out of it. to third, and his tag, tag was made, and they got him at first base. But he lined up, put one on the board, and we will go to the bottom of the fourth, tied at one. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. We go to the bottom of the fourth. We're tied at one on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Web Insurance Agency is serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Wildcats will send up Zach Welch, Jade Miller, and Kane Sullivan in the bottom of the fourth. Mr. Welch was one of the Wildcat hits early today, first inning. Made a couple nice plays in left field today. Good breaking ball for a strike. You know, Mark, we talked about how with these two teams, we kind of expected maybe a low-scoring game, and so far through four, it's been, been exactly, or through three, it's been exactly that. Ground ball, that's Welch, gonna be a hit. Two. Yeah, Welch is gonna go two for two. As the Wildcats get the leadoff runner on. Zach says this game's easy. Huh. And both runs in the game are unearned. Absolutely. So both pitchers have been, done their job Absolutely. today. Let's see how Coach Gomez chooses to play Jaden Miller. Jaden's a 308 hitter on the season and has 16 RBIs to lead the team as a sophomore. Popped out to the catcher. And he brought the bat back on a strike. Like Coach Gomez is playing to get a runner up. Not a big lead at first by any means. Welch has five stolen bases, but does not have much lead. Missed on the bunt attempt. 0-2. Mm. Oh, well, aren't the fundamentals of the game critical when it comes to a big game like this? You have to be able to do the little things. He's still up in the box. 0-2 oh, to Miller. And that pitch is low and in the dirt. Good pickup behind the plate by Seth Sharp. One and two. Yeah, if Bath could get a wild pitch here, then same effect. Sullivan's on deck, followed by Bo Decker. Defensive swing, mm -hmm. hit a foul ball. He let that pitch get really deep on himself before he decided to give it a cut. Still one and two. Sophomore shortstop. That ball's hit up in the air. 
And who's going to play? It looks like it'll give way to the second baseman. Hershey will make the play, and that's the first out of the inning. Here's Sullivan to bat. He took a call third strike to open up inning number two. Number seven hitter in the Wildcat order. Got back to Welch at first base. Ryan McGee's got good, good quick feet out there, doesn't he? He does. For a big guy. Mm -hmm. Of course, good football player, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Fastball. Got away from the catcher, and that's going to move the runner up. There's the old PB. So the pass ball moves Zach Welch into scoring position. He has scored seven runs this season. Yeah, you just you, you hate to see that for a defense because you work so hard to get that first guy out with a runner on, and now you have the same effect with a runner on second. Multiple looks from Magoo. And here he goes to the plate. That ball's fouled back. Makes it 1 1. Ryan Magoo's earned run average on the season is 1.31 and has not given up an earned run today. His lone run was unearned back in inning number one. He's thrown a nice game so far. Slowed the pace down here. Yep. Sullivan backed out, called time. Major leagues would be starting the clock on us. You like the pitch clock in a major league? Mark? Well, let's look at this pitch. Here's Magoo, back to the plate. Ball's fisted right up the him. middle, and it's an Adam ball yep. right to the second baseman, Hershey. Hershey keeping busy this yeah, inning. That he is. The answer to that is, I think, Old people, right? That's me. I understand. The clock doesn't belong in baseball. I understand. Okay. I understand. It's, it's speeded the game up. Um, I, I kind of get some of that. But uh, one of the time-honored parts of baseball is leave a mm -hmm. clock out of it. So to the plate comes Clay Bodecker. He singled the first time up. He'd like to do that again in this, this situation. Takes the first pitch strike. I like the, I like the effect of it. Because yeah. obviously pitchers have slowed way down, but I hate the fact that you have to legislate it. Ball's grounded, and well, there's that guy making a play again. Hershey gets, gets another all. out. Yes, he does. And Magoo gets out of the inning with a ground ball to second base. And we will go to the top of the fifth. We're tied to one. You're watching High School Baseball WOSN. To the top of the fifth we go on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. That means Elida will bring to the plate the number nine hitter, Darian Jones. And back to the top of the order, and Gabe Adcock and Seth Sharp were tied at one. Each pitcher has pitched well through four. Neither one has given up an earned run. Jones struck out. Back in inning. Ball's hit up in the air, and we're going to continue the second base play. It looks that way. And yes, we are. <laughs> that one goes to McGee. And the first pitch swinging is a pop out to the second baseman. You know, I was going to comment, but, he, you know, Darren went ahead and swung at the first pitch. With a left-handed hitter with decent speed, I would have been shocked if he would tried to bunt for a hit there just to, just to get on base for the top of the lineup. Here's Adcock. He's singled and flied out today in his two previous appearances. 302 hitter. Missed with the first pitch. When you uh, coached, did you keep track of first pitch strikes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Key and key part of the game. Absolutely. It? That's a get ahead pitch. Good breaking ball that time as he swung yeah. through that one, makes it one on one. Gabe didn't see the end of that. He was, he was spinning. His head out in left field. Mm -hmm. One one to the center fielder. Now two and one. But you know how it is, Mark. You can chart everything, but at some point you still have to execute. And, but you do, uh, even in high school, kids show trends. Ball's hit to third. Razor with the pickup. 
to Collins, got him across the field, and it will be a ground out 5-3. Second out of the inning, and Seth Sharp comes Five to play. Five-pitch inning going so far with two down. Yeah, Sharp is 0 for 2 today with a strikeout and a fly out to left field. Sharp's uh, been the catcher today mm -hmm. for the Elida Bulldogs. Senior. It's a big inning for Bo Decker, especially having that rocky one last inning. Ground ball. That's going to go to the shortstop, Miller. Oh, and he bobbled it and threw it away, the two. Good yeah, backup by Sullivan, anyway. He should have just eaten that ball. He, no chance of getting a runner at first base. So an error on the shortstop. Would that be correct? Were you going to That's call correct. that? That's correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, certainly. Yep. He never fielded it cleanly. And that'll bring Magoo to the plate. He's two for two today. Ryan's having a good day. Yes, a couple he is. singles. Pitched well and scored the only run for the Bulldogs today. Back an inning ago. That's Swing a strike. strike. Yep. Oh, one. Sharp with seven steals on the year, so he, he's shown that he likes to go too. That ball's hit the three left field. He's three for three today. Looks like he doesn't want his junior season to no, come to absolutely. an end. He's had a great day at the plate. So with two outs, Braden Simmons will come to the plate. I spoke way too soon about having a pitch efficient yeah. inning, didn't I? Braden Simmons looked at a called third strike back in inning at number one, and then was on by an error last inning. And he lied to bid to get a lead. Bobcat's got a couple guys in the bullpen. Breaking ball. Stayed inside. Seven RBIs on the season for the junior's right fielder. That pitch is way high. 2-0. and Can you see who's up down there? Yeah, I can. Looks like Logan Markley. Logan pitched against the light of the first game this year, Swing, right? So that is correct. Sophomore. 12 and two, vic two, 12 to two victory mm -hmm. almost a month ago by the Wildcats. He did complete, complete game. Yeah, complete yeah. game, five innings. That ball's popped up. Collins like says he's got play. it. And he drifts over towards the fence and does make the play. And the Wildcats get out of it on the pop out that was corralled by the first baseman. Third out of the inning, two runners left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. We're still tied at one. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Bath High School. To the bottom of the fifth we go with a score tied at one. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Ryan Magoo back to the mound for his fifth inning of work. Giving up an unearned run today. He struck out. Six, walked a single batter. And he will face Jackson Kohlreiser, Skyler Lehman, and Tyson McGee. Kohlreiser's going to play at Riser University. Oh, is he? Yeah. Really? That's three three kids on their three? roster. Yeah, he is. And uh, let me see. Riser's going to Owens Tech, and Skyler Lehman's going to only Central College. Hmm. Missed with the first pitch to Cole Reiser. A lot of non-traditional schools for students from our area to be attending. Breaking balls in the dirt. 2-0. and oh. Wildcats trying to get a lead runner on here. Open the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, if you get a chance to get your nine man on to start an inning, that's... That's a rally. That brings up Skyler Lehman and Tyson McGee will bat after Jackson Kohlreiser. Fooled by that pitch. Yeah, he did. Nice breaking pitch. Yes, it was. Two and two. Magoo back to the plate again. Foul ball spoiled a good pitch. Mm -hmm. Well, it rains Tuesday. It rains Wednesday. What do you do practice-wise this time of year? Do you, you go into the gym? Do you just let them go home? You pray for it to stop raining. <laughs> there you go. So, no, I, I mean you got You got You got to do something. Swinging the, the strike three. 
the timing is so important, even if it's just to get the kids in, stretch them out, throw a little bit, um, take some batting practice. But you sure hate to go back in the gym. That's just demoralizing. But you don't have a choice. Both, both pitchers anticipated pitching yesterday, mm -hmm. but the day off hasn't seemed to hurt either one no, of them today. I don't, I don't think that hurts, so. you know, that one-day delay. To the top of the order, the Wildcats go. Skyler Lehman takes a ball in the first pitch. Breaking ball. That's a strike. Snap that one off well. It's, that might be the best breaking pitch he's thrown all day. A nice drop to it. One and one. Foul ball. One and two. Tyson McGee will hit next. Lehman was on by an error and then struck out in inning number two. And swung at a high pitch and struck out on that one. So back-to-back -back swinging strikeouts, the eighth of the game for Ryan Magoo. Ryan's chucking him up. You know, you ask about the practice thing. Part of it's just to keep a routine. You know, you, you, you got school all day. The kids are used to having something to do physically after school. And couch time's not necessarily your friend. Tyson McGee steps in. Tyson's struck out and flied out today. That pitch was low and away, 2-0. Ryan's showing that breaking pitch quite a bit this inning. Three and oh. Almost looks like he's staying away from McGee. But I would think with two outs, you just challenge up. So I think it's more of a control issue. Back to back left-handed hitters coming up for the Wildcats. He throws a strike on that pitch to make it three and one. Yeah, I don't think you could look past McGee to get to Razor and Collins, do you? <laughs> 358 and 481. That's probably not no, the plan. No, two outs. And he walked him. Second walk of the game for Ryan Magoo. And that will bring up Joel Razor. 358 on the season with nine RBI. Took a called third strike in inning number one and flied out to the center fielder in the third. That's and going to that's be down. That's going to be over the top of the second by shortstop's head. And Joel Razor will fist one into center field. And the Wildcats got two on with two outs. All of a sudden, they're in business. Here comes Quentin Collins, 481 on the season with nine RBI. And he has walked and struck out today. He was intentionally walked in the first inning. Now you look at it like you got to get him out because the kid behind him is two for two. That would be Zach Welch, mm -hmm. who's a meeting at the mound with Coach Leatherman. The WSN Scores app is new and improved. you got to download the brand-new app from your app store so you don't miss any of our favorite team scores. The new WSN app replaces the old app, so make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all of the scores. Big track meet coming up tomorrow night, Division Three from Spencerville. That mm -hmm. will air on WSN on Saturday as we're... Boy, the track has been really popular on WSN. WL, WBL meet last week. Uh, the NWC meet last week. The MAC meet last week. Track has been very big on our station over the last several weeks. But right now, we're looking at baseball. The Wildcats with two on. And the 481 hitting Quentin Collins to step in. Ordinarily, you would say, don't give him anything to hit. Yeah, Welch is two for two. Yeah. He was talking about track, Mark. I've been to two track meets in my entire life. It's not very good attendance, <laughs> is it? <laughs> You've been a little bit busy in the spring. Well, Collins takes that one inside. It's hard to be on the ball diamond in the track at it the is, same time. I was out to watch the WBL meet last week. What a group of athletes in that conference. Oh, yeah. That's, that's got to be fun. Magoo back to the plate and ball three. He hasn't thrown anything close to the zone. If you are a track fan, catch the WBL meet. The final race of the girls was a four by two by four by four, and it was outstanding. Really? And foul ball to get let him hit away with that one. Bath was behind Ottawa Glendorf and Tatum Walsh put on a final 
400. That was unbelievable. No kidding. Won by a couple tenths of a second. Tremendous race. But OG won the boys and girls event. Or the meet for it. And he walked him. So now the bases are loaded. A walk to Tyson McGee. A single by Joel Razor. A walk to Quentin Collins. And that will bring Zach Welch to the plate, who is two for two today. And Zach's thinking, man, I sure hope I got one more left in this bat. He singled in the first. He singled to open up the fourth. One now could be and a game changer, what we got? it? Going to put a runner in? Yes, we are. The Wildcats are going to bring in number 18. Lepley. Jacob Lepley, Jacob Lepley mm -hmm. will run for Collins at first base. Coach Gomez getting a little speed in the lineup. Mm -hmm. But the bases are loaded here in the bottom of the fifth. High school baseball and the old reentry rule. It's a great rule, isn't it? It is. It get a lot of more kids into the game. Add some strategy. Magoo looks and looks and looks. There's nobody at third base to hold. And that's a pitch that's called a strike at the top of the zone. The third baseman, Brody Altenbach, is way over off the line. He's so way off the line. Yeah, nobody really holding McGee on over there. Both of Welsh's hits have went right through that hole that he's trying to cover. Good play by Sharp as that pitch was in the dirt. I think I'd like to see Sharp drop a little bit more there and use his equipment instead of the glove. <laughs> Put a ball in the dirt. <laughs> one and one. Hoping for a good bounce. Ball's hit and made it a play Look over here that. by Atkins. He makes a play and gets to the bag. What a play, huh? And Magoo gets out of it. A sliding stop at first base by Travis Atkins. And that will put Zach Welsh as the third out of the inning. And we'll go to the top of the six. We're still tied at one. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. We're back at Bath High School. The score is tied at one as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Good play by the first baseman, Travis Atkins, to get out of the inning. Great athletic play. You know, when you are the, the player who's being dh for, you mm -hmm. kind of live to make plays like yeah. that, right? You yeah. don't get to hit, so I, I got to do something special defensively yeah. and went down and made a nice play on that one. Clay Bodecker goes back to the mound. Clay has given up one earner, unearned run today, has five strikeouts and a walk. Got Quentin Collins re-entered back at first base as we expected after being pinch run for. Mark Troyer will hit. He is a designated hitter today for the Elida Bulldogs and Coach Tyler Leatherman. Strikeout and a walk for Mark. It's 229 on the season, and first pitch strike. You know, Mark, in games like this, so many times you get down to the end of the game, and it's uh, sad to say, but it's the first team that blinks or the first team that makes a, a miscue can lead to changing the outcome. Strike two. Razor was in a bit at third like he was expecting mm -hmm. a possible bunt with the two-strike count now. He has backed up to a more traditional third-base position. As Bo Decker comes back to the plate, that ball's fouled away. Right over our heads. Stays 0-2. The winner goes to Clear Fork tomorrow night, the number two seed in the Division II Northwest District Tournament that we're seeing this evening. And did he get him? Ooh. He left it high. Tough pitch to take. Good yeah, eye, though. Two strikes, absolutely. Yep. One and two, Seaver and Hershey on deck. Seaver on deck, Hershey is in the hole. And that was hit hard and out to right field. Going to make a play at first base, and Collins didn't get to the bag. Yeah, if Collins would have covered up, I yeah, think Yeah, they a had play. a chance, didn't they? Single by Mark Troyer becomes the fifth hit of the game. Quentin found himself a yeah. bystander. 
the right fielder, Cole Reiser, came up with ideas of trying to get the runner at first and, and turned it into an out. But Collins wasn't on the bag, and we're going to get a pinch runner. Let's see who comes in here for... Oh, Clear Fork was the first seed. My mistake. Thank you for pointing that out. Mm -hmm. The runner is yeah. number six, Carpenter, Dominic Carpenter. I believe Wapak got the two seed in that. So in that Carpenter section. runs for Troyer as Zach Seaver steps in. <laughs> Zach with the sacrifice the last time up. Don't be shocked to see it again here. The leadoff hitter on base and you can see die back there. Looking to see if I can find Carpenter's. He's got many stolen bases. Let's see. He has we, 10. He does. So there you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He has none. I was reading Seaver's line. Okay. My mistake. This might be a good time for his first. Yep. One of those to count. It's like this is Carpenter's third game that he's appeared in. That fastball stayed high, so it's 2-0. and oh. it take a strike here? Oh, I think so. Absolutely. And or, instead, or you just hit it in the left just, field for a base hit. Yeah, you can just rip the ball into the left field and put the first two runners on. And here comes Coach Gomez to the mound, and I think we're going to get a pitching change. We're going to take a break. Way. You're watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your <coughs> catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. The new pitcher for the Bath Wildcats, Logan Markley. Coach Spencer, he is 1-3 and three on the season, and, and that win came. W right here. And came yep. against the Elida Bulldogs. This will be his sixth appearance of the season, 29 innings. He's given up 32 hits, 10 earned runs. He's walked 11 and struck out 15 in his 29 innings of work. Of course, Bo Decker will be responsible for the two runners on base. Very respectable 2.41 ERA. For Logan, nice frame. Obviously, somebody that Coach Gomez is looking to have on his staff for the next couple of years. Big sophomore, three-sport mm -hmm. player. Now, you were talking about dads earlier. Mm -hmm. His father played for me. Nah. High school basketball. There you go. Yeah. All right, here we go. Stepping back in, Trey Hershey today. Trey's 0 for 2. We're bunting. Razor's playing in, so is Collins. And there's the square around and pitches the ball. Yeah, you have to bunt here and set it up for the bottom of the lineup. That would be Alton back and Jones, and then back to the top of the order, Adcock, if they can get that far. Yeah, Wild that. pitch. Nope, pass ball. Right through yeah, the catcher's that was, glove. That was right there on the yeah. outside part of the plate. The pitch was called a ball. Wow, you talk about creating pressure. Yeah, now we got runners on second and third and did not require the bunt. Remember how they up. scored their first run, yep. Coach? Here comes that squeeze play, huh? And 3-0 and oh is the count. I think if they do put it on, they'll wait until he gets at least a strike, take the opportunity to try to get a walk here. Infield's playing in, of course, as we're in the sixth. And Markley throws a strike, a much needed strike to make mm -hmm. it three and one. Now anything's fair game. You try to throw a pitch that's up. Not able and to. Missed through a ball. So the bases are loaded and nobody is out. We've got a ground ball to second and a ground ball to third by Allen Ball today. He does not have an RBI on the season. That's Wouldn't this crazy. be a great time uh, for him to get one right here? Might bust through here. Yes, sir. Markley throws a strike with a fastball. Bath with the infield exceptionally far in. This is something I always look for, Coach. If, I don't know if everybody teaches this, but even to look for a double squeeze because your runner at second can get an incredible break. Ball's hit foul, and it will be... 
Oh, and two. I know you don't see that a whole lot, but with the shortstop tipping that much, you can get your lead directly behind him mm -hmm. and then just take off on a dead sprint on the pitch. So your runner's literally at third by the time the ball gets to the plate. Barkley back to the plate and throws a breaking ball that's wide, but Sullivan was able to grab that one. One and two. You have two. to know your hitters and you have to know your runners. Ground that ball, and that's going to be picked up. Going to get a fielder's choice, but a good nice play, play. By, the, by the shortstop, Jaden Miller. That's going to get a run in. Really nice play by Jaden. So the lead runner in this, Mark Troyer, scores on the fielder's choice, and they get, let's see, they got Seaver, right? Seaver. Yeah, yep. they got Six Seaver. Unassisted. Six unassisted for the first out. What a big run for Elida, huh? Yeah, it is for a fact. And now the left-handed hitting Darian Jones will step in. A strikeout and a pop out for him today as the first pitch is a ball. That run, of course, will be charged to Bo Decker. Mark Lee. The ball's hit up in the air. Yeah, he's playing way short in right field. Cole Riser with the catch. Co-Riser was positioned very well for Darian Jones at bat. Sets the second out, and that will take us to the top of the order when the center fielder, Gabe Adcock, will step in. You know, once again, we're looking at a situation where if you get out of this, only give up one, you actually survive well. Adcock's one for three on the day. Breaking ball for a strike from Markley. Yeah, how big is that pass ball now? 0-1. Mm. Oh and 0-1. And it overmatched him with a fastball that was high. 0-2 oh is the count. Barkley. And blew him away with a fastball. So Logan Markley comes in and does his job. He gets three outs. But Elida puts a run on the board, and they will take a two-to-one lead to the bottom of the sixth. You're watching high school baseball, WOSN. We go to the bottom of the sixth. The Elida Bulldogs have taken a two-to-one lead over the Bath Wildcats. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency. Serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. And now for the first time today, Chad, uh, Mr. Magoo has a lead. He does. As he goes to the he bottom does. of the sixth, and he'll see Miller, Sullivan, and Bo Decker. The question is, will Bo Decker hit or will Markley hit in his yeah, that's, spot? That's we'll have to question. see how that goes today. That ball's grounded up the middle. Here comes the shortstop, Seaver. Makes the play and pulled him he off. He pulled him off. He pulled him off with the throw. He sure did. So an error on the throw. Second error of the baseball game today for the Elida Bulldogs. And Wildcats have the leadoff hitter on with Kane Sullivan stepping in. Well, the whole flow of that play just took him right where he needed to go, and he just didn't make an accurate throw. Jaden Miller, the sophomore shortstop, has three stolen bases on the season. Pretty good lead. Yeah, he's out there. And he dives back in. Of course, when you wear the oven bit, you can steal and yeah. be uh, you get, you eight got feet longer away. Arms. And you got longer <laughs> arms that way. You're be safe. Good pitch from Magoo as he blew a fastball right by him. Sullivan's got five RBIs on the season. Struck out, lined out today. Good breaking ball. You know, the old adage is in high school baseball that the teams that catch and throw the best win the most games and almost always certainly shows up in a high leverage situation. Ball's line to the shortstop. 
Going to get one. They do, and just he's going to throw it across the diamond. Yeah, but just getting loose. Yep. Fielder's choice to knock off the. Did a really nice job getting the lead runner. On a 6-4 play. And the fielder's choice puts Sullivan on, and Markley will come to hit. I can find Logan Markley's numbers on the season. I got him at 138. 138 on the season, so Markley will hit. And Sullivan is on at first base. He has five stolen bases on the season, and there he goes. And they got him. They did. So a caught stealing as Kane Sullivan goes out to get the shortstop. The second mm -hmm. baseman made the play. Shortstop? Shortstop. That's what I thought. 2 6 on the attempted steal. I was really surprised to see Kane running on that mark. He, he didn't really have an exceptionally big lead. And what was the call? Well, Ryan hurried up and pitched the ball. Yeah. And uh, evidently time had been granted. Tim Schumann, the home plate umpire, called it a no pitch. What a momentum swing for Elida after the throwing air to start that? the inning. Yep. So Markley is in a hole at 0-2 from Magoo. And swinging strike three, ball's in the dirt. The catcher, Sharp's going to make the play down to first. And that inning will come to an end. The Wildcats had a runner on, but he raced in the caught stealing. And we will go to the top of the seventh with Elida on top. Two to one. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. the top of the seventh we go on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Elida with a run in the top of the sixth has taken a two to one lead. And Logan Markley will back on the mound to face Seth Sharp, Ryan Magoo, and Braden Simmons. Seth Sharp today struck out on by an air. Also flied out to left field today. Mm -hmm. So it's over three. Got, Got hit on his hands one. on yeah. that one, didn't he? Sure did. It's his fourth time of seeing, I'm sorry, it's his first time of seeing Logan Markley today. First pitch strike from Markley. Breaking balls hit to Markley. Makes a nice play on it. It's going to run it over and flip it to Collins. Nice play. So Chess Sharp will go 0 for 4. But here's Ryan Magoo, who not only has pitched well today, Chad, but is looking at Three hits today in three at-bats. Have a day, Ryan. Yes, he is. We're passing out T-shirts right now. You get one. You get the shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> they picked me. Scored a run back in inning number four when he let off with a single and came around. And he's going to hit that one hard, but hits it to the short to the second base from McGee, who throws him out. Well struck ball, but ends up being an out. Second out of the inning. And Braden Simmons, and let's see if Braden takes a couple pitches mm -hmm. since his pitcher just ran to first base. Give him a chance be to a set bad the dugout idea, for a it? minute. Yep. Especially heading into the bottom of the seventh inning. Simmons today. It's 0 for 3, and that's a strike for Mark. That's one of those situations yeah. where if Ryan gets on, you hope that there's a pinch rudder ready because yes, sir. give him some time to get a drink and get composed. Markley overmatched him with that fastball. It is 0 and 2. Yeah, since coming in, Logan's thrown the ball well, hasn't he? Has he has pitched well, hasn't he? Gave up a walk to the first batter that he faced, but after that, he has been on fire. And it's a tough pitch right that there. That was a real tough pitch to take. Looking forward to seeing this kid pitch for a couple more years in high school. One and two. And got him. Logan Markley gets his second strikeout in a 1-2-3 inning, but Elida needs three outs to go on to the sectional final. Coming up with the bottom of the seventh, you're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Bath Wildcats trailing by a run. Ryan McGew trying to shut him out here and move on to the 
sectional final. Wildcats going to get a pinch hitter. Looking to see who that is on my roster. We've got. We have number 20 who I do not Great question. McGue misses with the first pitch. I don't have that number. McGue with a strike on a okay, breaking this is pitch. Daniel Cole will step in. As he will hit for Cole Riser. And the count is one and one on Daniel Cole. And now two and one. He missed with that pitch. That's a strike. One and two. Let's see if I can find Daniel Cole in my stat page. And that was a tough pitch mm -hmm. to take, and he did. That actually didn't look as good as the pitch. <laughs> exactly. looked better than the pitch before that. Two and two on Cole. Actually, it was three and two, and he won. Mm -hmm. So the Wildcats get the opening. Cole does his job. Runner on base. That's the fourth walk today for mm -hmm. Magoo. And back to the top of the order we go, and that would be Skyler Lehman. <laughs> Skyler looking for his first hit of the day. 0 oh, for 3, struck out a couple times against Magoo. Looking to bunt, and takes a called strike. He squared, but he, did, he didn't look serious about it, did he? He was kind of pulling off He's as the pitch off, came yeah. in. 0 oh, and 1. Now it's time to be serious. Infield third is in. And takes the breaking ball away. One and one. You surprised he's not looking to move him up here? Yeah, you know, that, that's one of those things, you know, you, you know your guys. Right. You know. Right. Now he squares and it takes the bat back and that pitch is high. It's two and one. You can see the outfield shaded towards the uh, right field side. If, he gets, mm -hmm. if he's able to pull one here, which is difficult to do against Magoo, but if he can pull one here, he can run for a long time. I'm playing him definitely to hit to the right side. Squares around, there's a button to grass. Magoo's gonna have to make the play, and he got him at first, and the sacrifice works. So Magoo makes the play himself, one to three. It's a nice bunt, well, well played. And Cole will move up to second base, doing just exactly what he was supposed to do. And you've talked about guys doing what they're supposed to do. The shortstop, Seaver, was over third mm -hmm. to make sure that Cole didn't have any other ideas. Here's McGee in. Long hold, and McGee backs out. McGee's 0 for 2 with a walk today. Back in the fifth inning, the Wildcats left the bases loaded. Yeah, Ryan right. was one. left on third. Yeah, he was left on third, that's correct. Pitch is high. First pitch ball. Razor and Collins. Next two hitters for the Wildcats. Pitches in the dirt. Sharp kept it from going to the screen. Magoo looks like he's laboring here, here a little bit, Mark. Nobody in the bullpen. It's nope. your game right your now, game. young man. The best you got, you, you go with it. 2-0. Oh. That ball's roped into left they field. It. They're going to send him? We're going to have a tie ball game here. And we are. Oh and my. headed to second base as he missed the cutoff, man. He bobbled it, picking it up. He and did. Air, air mailed it to the mound. Tyson McGee gets the big RBI for the Wildcats, and Cole, who walked, scored all the way from second, and we're tied at two. Just as importantly, by missing the cutoff, man, you now have a man in scoring position, winning runs in scoring position for Bath, as McGee was able to run up on the throw. And here is Razor, the 358 hitting third baseman with nine RBIs on the season. He is one for three today. This game just changed in a hurry. It certainly did as we're tied at two in the bottom of the seventh with a runner on second, one out. Razor swings through a first pitch. 
Quentin Collins is on deck. You have to really like Bath's chances of doing damage here. McGee, good lead at second base. Seaver behind him. One and one. We have we've had cheering in the Bath dugout this <laughs> inning, but it's uh it's heartfelt now. One and one, Magoo back to the plate. Razor takes one inside. It's two and one. You know, they walked Collins intentionally earlier. Mm -hmm. If he gets an out here on Razor, they may well do that again. I could see that happening because that run doesn't mean anything. And Razor backs out. Two and one is the count with one out. Razor is the key at bat here. The senior, Joel Razor, has nine RBI on the season. McGee has scored 10 runs on the season. He would certainly like to add number 11 right here. That's a strike. Levels the count at 2-2. Ryan Magoo with a 2-2 count. Got and him. He blew him away. What a big strikeout yes, for Ryan sir. Magoo. What a great time for strikeout number nine for that young man. Now Quentin will walk Let's to first see. base. And that is correct for mm -hmm. the second time. Collins gets a pass which will bring Zach Welch to the plate. And Zach is two for three. Yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. You got to take your chances with Zach. Even though Zach's out though today, if you remember, he hit the ball well to first base. Nice sliding play by Adkins to get him mm -hmm. out back in the fifth inning. He's roped a couple out to in, uh, hits today yeah, too. Struck the ball well every time up. Sophomore Welch steps in against Junior Magoo. I'm a little surprised that Elida hasn't pulled their outfield in to try to try to take away a play at the plate. Any ball hit on the grass, you can score. First pitch strike. The whole outfield's deep. Magoo with a long hold. Here's the pitch and breaks another one off. Well, Zach's hit fastballs all day, so Ryan Magoo's taking notes. 0-2. Oh, pitch is high, stealing third, and he dives in safely. Shortstop was calling for a pick. I don't know if you saw him flash his glove. Ryan obviously chose not to go that way. But with your shortstop out of position, you probably at least have to step off to let people get back. One and two. He got him swinging. Went to the curveballs at a bat. McGew came back and got his 10th strikeout, and we're going to go to extra. Free baseball today. We head to the eighth. Baseball. Yes, sir. We're tied at two. You're watching high school baseball on WOSN. To the eighth inning we go. Our presenting sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Wapak, Dolphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Bass scratched on a run. They sure did. But, uh, I think Ryan Magoo feels pretty fortunate right now. They didn't scratch out two runs the way mm -hmm. that inning was setting up. This will bring up Mark Troyer. He is singled today, mm -hmm. walked, and struck out. Logan Markley back to the mound. He started that sixth inning rally that gave a light of the lead with that single. Scored a run today. Mm -hmm. He'll be followed by Seaver and Hershey. And hit by pitch. Hit by pitch to start the inning. So. Well, we're the part of the lineup all day. Coach Leatherman showed the, the short game, so. Expect to see guys in the front of the box button them up. Seaver has a sacrifice today. Mm -hmm. RBI. In doing so, Troyer has just a single stolen base on the season. It takes a ball. He also has a single today. He and sure does. Hit one up in the air to the third baseman. He's hot. Last time up, he got a single. Maybe he's letting him swing through. Foul ball. One and one.
Toyer's pretty hanging pretty close to yeah, first base is. over here. Not yeah. much of a lead. As Seaver steps back in, and he's going to hit that Look one that. into the hole. His Boy, last two at bats have resulted in two hits. The light is in good shape right now, Coach. They are with now Hershey you, coming to bat. Now if you get a chance to bunt them up, you get two guys in scoring position. Comes Coach Gomez to the mound. He has nobody warming up in the bullpen. And I didn't look down to see if anybody mm -hmm. was throwing between innings. but It's uh, just a reset here. Talk about how they want to yeah, play I, defensively. I'd be shocked if Trey Hershey's not bunting. Be an ideal opportunity for a trade yeah. today is struck out once. He's hit the ball up in the air to the left fielder, and he's walked. The walk came back in the sixth inning. As we were talking earlier, anything to put pressure on a defense. Got a runner at first base, don't we? Mm hmm We pinch ran. Miley. Miley will run at first base. Running for Seaver. Seaver will undoubtedly re-enter, I would imagine, as the shortstop. Miley is. Yep. Sophomore appearing in his eighth game of the year. Wildcats are in at the corners. It's amazing how many pressure situations we've seen in just the last two and a half innings. Pitches outside from Markley. Miley's on first, Troyer's on second with nobody out. Now we know why Zach Seaver got run for. He's headed to the bullpen. There you go. That pitch is also outside. It's 2-0. and oh. I wonder if Magoo's getting close to his pitch count. I would say he's probably yeah, getting there. You know, we're up into mm -hmm. the seventh inning anyway. And a couple decently long innings. That ball's bunted and bunted well. Collins is going to get it and make the play. But the sack works. Good well, bunt from Hershey. Very well done by Hershey. And that moves the two runners up to second and third. Brody Altenbach will enter. We're going to have a change this second visit to the mound this inning. And Coach Gomez heads to the mound while we sort out who's going to play where. Let's take a break. You're watching High School Baseball, WOSN. Well, the Wildcats have made a pitching change. They have brought in to pitch. Let me see. That would be Skyder Lehman, correct? Lehman. Mm -hmm. Lehman's 3-3 three three on the season with a 171 ERA. In the process, Jackson Kohlreiser moved to center field, and Carson Green entered the game to play in right. Looking at Layman's numbers here, 32 and two-thirds innings, 24 hits. He's walked 22, but in those 32.2, he has struck out 48 batters. And stepping in will be Brody Altenbach. Runners on second, third, bunt time. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm not getting him in the pitch swings here. Swings right through it. It's a foul ball. Darian Jones is on deck. This is Alton Bach, who does not have an RBI on the season, and would he like to have one right here? I think he got one his last time with the fielder's did. choice. That's right, he did. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Pitch is low from Lehman. Look at his stat page, rather, than what he did mm -hmm. today. So thank yep. you for that. You're welcome. One one's the count. It's interesting. The last two times that Light has put so much pressure on it's been just the exact same spot in the lineup. Six, seven, eight, and nine. Swung through that pitch from Lehman. One and two. Yeah, I really thought Coach Leatherman would put, put some small ball on here. Lehman back to the plate, and that ball's hit foul. Got it in on the fist. And I thought you might have to make a play there. For I know. A it was close, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. not, not a very big window here. No, I'm be, ducking. It'd be I'm a ducking. shot to get up here where we're at. <laughs> One and two, the count remains. Take something very direct, wouldn't it? That one's a foul ball as well. Big old hang with him right here. One and two and a pair of foul balls.
approaching 7 o'clock mm -hmm. this evening. Good ball game. It has been a good game, hasn't it? Lehman, back to the plate. And a bit high. It's 2-2. Two and two. You know Coach Gomez is went way beyond what he hoped he'd have to do on the mound today. Well, you got to win today to get you to got, the mound. Yep. Yes, sir. Lehman struck him out. Strikeout swinging. Skyler Lehman, his first of the day, and that will be the second out of the inning. And take us to Darian Jones. You know, that's, that's big in that situation where you – Basically have a non-productive out because you make no contact. And now you got your nine man up. Terry and Jones is 0 for 3 today. Sorry. Really no ability to, to use a short game like this. Oh, wow. Look at this. Somebody missed a sign. It looked that way, didn't it? Mm -hmm. He came down in a hurry from, yep. from third base like the, the squeeze play was sure on. Did. And Jones did not offer no, at it. No flinch or indication at all. In fact, I was not watching the umpire. What was the call? It that was doesn't, a ball. That doesn't okay. mean Darian missed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's correct. Somebody was on the wrong page, mm -hmm. right? Swung through that pitch. It's one and one. Skyder Lehman trying to get out it's of it. It's looking like Coach Gomez made the right move at the right time, doesn't it? Another fastball. So one a little and two. overmatched here. That is correct. One and two is the count. Lehman. <laughs> you know, we're up above the first base dugout. Mm -hmm. We're up pretty good. And you can hear him grunt oh, with yeah. all the effort he put yeah, behind that one. He, it's the first one we've heard like that yeah, today. He reached back and really wanted that one. Two and two. Same thing, left it high. Full count. Gabe Adcock, the leadoff hitter, is on deck. <laughs> Hit up in the air. The third baseman, Razor, is calling for it and makes the play, and the Wildcats get out of it. Skyler Lehman comes in and does what Skyler Lehman's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Shuts the door with runners on second, third. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We're tied at two. We're watching high school baseball on WOSN. The Wildcats get out of an inning in the top of the eighth. Elida leaves two on, and Ryan Magoo comes back one to pitch a shutout in the bottom of the eighth and send it on. This will bring up Jaden Miller will open up the inning for the Wildcats, followed by Kane Sullivan. And Markley was in the batting order next. We'll see who actually is involved in that. Miller today is 0 for 3. Mm -hmm. 0 for 3 is Jaden, 308 hitter on the season. And McGue gets on by a, Got on by an error the last time at the shortstop. The Wildcats are sending a pitcher to the bullpen to warm up. Missed that pitch as well. Yeah, if they don't score here, they've got to really be careful of how many pitches they're letting Lehman throw if they advance and will play tomorrow because of the pitch count rule. Pitch is high. Joel Razor headed to the bullpen. One and two. Foul ball. Got a piece of that one. Ryan Magoo coming back out for some extra work today. One and two is the count. Foul ball again. I could dig my pitch count rule out of the box, but Lehman did only pitch to two batters. The number of pitches he can still yeah, go tomorrow. He, can, he has to stay under 30 pitches. Under 30. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one's fouled away. Three consecutive foul balls. That didn't miss by much, Mark. That yeah. just dropped behind the backstop about five you know, feet. That was one of our options to set right there. There it was. This yeah, is a little better spot. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been interesting. Uh, the catcher had a hard time getting back there. He's, he's tangled up with the home plate umpire. Count remains at one and two. This will be the seventh pitch of this at bat to Miller. 
Now, if you get to 125, you can finish the hitter that you're pitching that to. Hitter, correct. Mm -hmm. It's a ball, makes it two and two. And Seaver was warming up the last mm -hmm. inning, so I, he would be the choice. Yeah, I'd say he's ready. Got him swinging. Just the take, 11th strikeout. Gutsy performance day by Mr. Magoo. That is a fact. Kane Sullivan will step in. Kane's 0 for 3 today. Breaking ball that time for a first pitch strike. See the wheels turning down here. The Wildcats are going to bring Bo Decker back to hit. There's another breaking ball for a strike. Take advantage of that re-entry rule. Mm -hmm. Oh, now that Markley's no longer pitching. Ball's hit up in the air. I think so Jones left fielder's get to got it. A, yeah, That's had a good correct. break to it. Darian Jones gets to that one. I know this Second isn't out. conventional, but Markley could come back and pitch again. <laughs> he could, yeah. I mean, if you're really worried about Tomorrow. Here's Bo Decker back in the game. He is uh, one for two today. His plate appearances. Had a single back in the second inning. Fastball low. We might have another softball game done by the time we get done. <laughs> That's correct. It's in the dirt. It's Coldwater and Fort Recovery playing on the softball diamond this evening. District semifinal action. Somebody just parked one. Sounds like there. somebody yeah. just did something really good. It's three and O's to count. And they were orange jerseys, so we know what team it was. Would be the Coldwater Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. Cole Reiser's back on deck. He was hit for in the last inning. And that's a strike. Three and one's the count. And that's a walk. Yeah, I would think Ryan's getting pretty close with his pitch count. Fifth walk of the day. And see Coach Leatherman yeah. making a trip to the mound here. While they have this discussion, we're going to take a break. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. We're back at Bath. The Web Insurance Agency is sponsoring our scoreboard today. They serve Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. To the mound goes Zach Seaver. Zach on the season. Three and four record of 4.01 ERA in 36 and two thirds innings. He's given up 46 hits. He's walked 22 and he struck out 36. Master performance by Ryan. McGee. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know this is one of those situations where sometimes overlooked is that rain day. Mm -hmm. That one day off between games changes all the pitch count options for the amount of rest that these kids are required to have between appearances. And with no days off, that changes your one-day guy to a two-day to a two-day guy. Jackson Kohlreiser steps in. Jackson struck out twice. And then Daniel Cole batted for him in the bottom of the seventh, walked and scored the run that made it two to two. <clears throat> the last thing you want on a on a one on a no days off is a is an extra inning game. <laughs> Snapped off a breaking ball right there to make it 0 and two. Foul ball. Popped over the dugout down the first base side. Cole Reiser's the start of the game today as the right fielder who moved to center field last inning. It's 275 on the season. Mm -hmm. 
And he fooled badly on a very good breaking ball. Got him with a strikeout, and that will end the Wildcat 8th. And to the ninth we go. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. Free baseball continues. We go to the ninth inning here at Bath. We're tied at two. Elida will go one, two, three to start this inning. That would be Gabe Adcock, Seth Sharp, and Ryan Magoo. And Skyler Lehman comes back in after getting an out he needed back in the eighth inning to leave a couple runners on. And bunts up in the air and will go foul. You know, we were talking off air between innings that regardless of who wins this game, both teams are going to be detrimentally affected because they've had to go so deep into their bullpens with no days off between games. Ball's hit to right field where it's tracked down by Carson Green. So we start the ninth with an out. Seth Sharp will come in, the catcher. Seth is, uh, what, uh, 0 for 4 today? Mm -hmm. 0 for 4 today. Ryan McGew's on deck, who's had a really good day today. Seth's 0 for 4, but he's been on base twice. First pitch strike. Beneficiary of a drop third strike and uh, air. Strike two. Swung through a high pitch. Mm -hmm. And that pitch is outside and low. Not according to the fans. All, all of the uh, <laughs> Bath players who are seated right below us. They have much better that view. That ball's hit hard to center field. Cole Reiser's out there and tracks it down. Thought that ball had more mustard to I it did than too. it did. It did too. It, it sounded, sounded like it. Yes, it did. Really sounded good coming off the bat. Instead, ends up being a fly ball to Jackson Cole Reiser. And Ryan Magoo comes in. He scored a run today. He is three for four today. And has obviously pitched extremely well before the pitch count got him. Skyler Lehman. Gets him with a breaking ball on the first pitch. Do you like the pitch count rule, Coach? Seriously? Um, no, I don't like it. Seriously, I don't like it. Um, I think if... Strike two. If everybody paid attention to what, you know, each kid could do and, and, and not um, abuse an arm. Yep. It's, it's kind of like the major league pitch clock. Got him. The effects, the effects, I guess, is good, but the end, too bad you have to legislate it. it it's exactly right. It's, if it's uh, a little bit more maturity for right. a few coaches, we wouldn't have to worry about it. Either yep. way, Skyler Lehman goes a 1-2-3 inning. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Tied at two. You're watching High School Baseball on WOSN. From Bath High School, we go to the bottom of the ninth. We're tied at two. Zach Seaver back on the mound, and he will face the top of the Wildcat order. Skyler Lehman, Tyson McGee, Joel Razor. Elida was unable to do anything with their top in the ninth, so we'll see what the Wildcats can do. There's some sportsmanship throwing in yeah. two, two brand new baseballs when your team's at bat. <laughs> Skyler Lehman's 0 for 4 today. His first pitch goes outside. As we were talking, you've only got nine spaces on your scoreboard. You mm -hmm. need to end it now. You know what? I, I've got to shop at a different sporting goods store. <laughs> Breaking ball. That also is wide. 2 and 0. Well, I've got 10 on mine. Okay. However, my stomach is starting to tell me that mm -hmm. it's dinner time. Daylight and, daylight and uh, meal time. Ball's hit up in the air. F8. Tracking it down is Adcock, and he does so. It's the deepest ball we've seen hit all day. Got it up in the air. One out. That brings Tyson McGee to the plate. His RBI put us to where we're at at this 2-2 score. He is one for three today with a walk. Got as far as third base, but they couldn't get him in. That's high. Now I know why we're in the ninth. WLIO TV just showed up. Mm -hmm. That also is high, 2-0. Oh. They must have got a good tip. 
2-0 to, Zach, to Tyson McGee from Zach Seaver. Now it's 3-0. See if McGee's take it all the way here with a 3-0 count. And he does, and he gets a four-pitch walk. So the Wildcats get a runner on with Joel Razor up next. Joel's got a hit in uh, four at-bats today. Also struck out twice, though. If we were in the big leagues, you'd say this is what you pay your three and four guy for. The left-handed hitting, Joel Razor. Back-to-back -back lefties coming up here. McGee has three stolen bases on the season, and that ball's hit. Base hit. That's going to be a base hit to right field. They're going to hold the runner at second. They do. As Razor gets on. That didn't take long, did it? One pitch. pitch. First pitch hit, and the Wildcats have him at first and second for Quentin Collins. I think Quentin's going to see something to hit this time. He's going to have to, isn't he? Yep. Quentin's hitting 481 on the season. He's hit five home runs. You know, it's amazing when you think about the number of home runs that Bath's hit this year, and, and we haven't even seen a ball get close to the warning track by either team tonight. That pitch is low to Collins. You want to do everything you can to try to keep that runner from getting a third with one out because then you set yourself up for a sack or a squeeze play. Holds up on that pitch. It dives inside. It's 2-0. and oh. All of a sudden, Zach Seaver finding a little trouble mm -hmm. getting to the... Strike zone. That time he snapped off a good curveball. Makes it two and one. Quentin's seen three curveballs in a row. Let's see if the trend continues here. Well, none of the outfields are particularly deep. No, he just wanted a gap. Really. He's going to get something. And that's a fastball strike. He two and him. two. Yes, it did. He, was looking. he wasn't looking for that. Yeah, that's right. correct. Got him on the outside part of the plate. Nice fastball. I think he comes back with a breaker here. 2-2 two -two from Seaver. You are correct. It's fisted out in the left we field. We got to play at second base, Coach. We got to play they at second do. base. Jones runs it down out there. Couldn't and get rid of it. Yes, he did. So Man he went the second. opposite yeah. way with it. Man on second was stealing third and had it stolen. But that's the second out of the inning, and here comes Zach Welch. Zach Welch had singles the first two times he was up. Jones had to go a long way for that ball, and he also had to turn completely around to throw it back. Yeah, as, so, a, as a left-handed yeah, player, a it was a difficult play. throwback. But two outs for Welch. The sophomore left fielder, Seaver, trying to get out of it. Zach needs that fourth hit here. And he grounds it up the middle and bobbled a little bit at second base. Here comes the yeah, runner from yeah. third and he's safe. We had a ground ball to second. He bobbles it and not aware of the runner at third, not stopping. Didn't put the clamps on it. The Bath Wildcats get an unearned run in the bottom of the ninth inning. And they will take a three to two victory over the Elida Bulldogs. And quite honestly, Coach, both starting pitchers today put on oh, quite yeah. a performance Masterful. and deserved a little better today, didn't they? Masterful. Yep, exactly. So the Bath Wildcats will go to Coldwater tomorrow, the number one seed after taking this sectional semifinal. We want to thank our scoreboard sponsor today. That's been Webb Insurance Agency. Our presenting sponsor has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Hey, Coach Spencer, thanks for coming in here today. Absolutely. Great it's job, great man. Time. Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate it. Our crew today has been Jacob O'Neill, Nick Fraley. And uh, we're going to thank them for their efforts today. Jacob will take us back to the station to edit it all together. The tournament manager is Bill Garland. He set us up today. And the Bath Wildcats will move on with an unearned run in the bottom of the ninth to take a 3-2 victory over the Elida Bulldogs. You've been watching High School Tournament Baseball on WOSN.